The search, the interest in extraterrestrial intelligence is increasing in today's world. Not just the common media, but good science as well. Uh, how does a philosopher look at the uh, possibility of real intelligence outside of the human species? Well, I'm not sure that, uh, as a philosopher, I have anything particular to say to add to what the scientists are saying. If um, I think, as I do, that the universe was brought into existence by something which was directed towards producing life and consciousness, that still doesn't mean that I have to believe that the universe is full from end to end of intelligent life. Let's simplify it and suppose that I believe in a traditional God, which I don't, but let's suppose I did. I could say this traditional God wanted to produce life in the universe, and he produced an enormous universe, and he wanted to ensure that there would be life on Earth. And then he'd have done his job. And if he wanted more life, he'd have created another universe, and then another one as well, and so on. The sheer sure fact that you think that the universe is directed towards producing life doesn't make you think that life is necessarily going to be common. Now, as having looked at the science, I am persuaded by a lot of people that life is probably very rare in our universe, that it's probably a very, very large universe. It's got intelligent life in billions of places, trillions of places, maybe infinitely many places if the universe is infinitely large. For sure, many infinitely, pla infinitely places, infinitely many places if it's that large. But still, it can't be very common because otherwise we would have signs of extraterrestrial life. We would, for example, have been visited by extraterrestrials. Current technology would allow us to colonize the entire galaxy in a matter of maybe 200 million years. It's easy enough to imagine technologies which would get us right across, colonize the whole lot in 400,000 years. The galaxy is about 200,000 light years across. It would be fantastic to think that the universe was going to be teeming with life, which had developed in all sorts of different places, but we were the the very first life forms to develop. This would put us in such an extraordinary position. I'm not willing to accept that. So I think that extraterrestrial life is very rare, but I think that the search for it is very well worth carrying on because the payoff would be so marvelous if we found it. And it's quite possible we would be able to detect life not just in our galaxy, but in other galaxies. It could be that living beings would be able to transform their galaxies by spreading through them in ways which we would be able to detect in the near future. Which we, of course, have not so far. We haven't so far. So far, people looking out at galaxies to see if there are signs of engineering which allow intelligent beings to absorb all the energy from the suns in those galaxies. They haven't seen big dark galaxies where all the suns are having their sunlight absorbed. Yeah. Or they've seen some big dark galaxies, but they've said it must be dust. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take both alternatives and ask what the implications would be. There are only two, I think, and that is that we are indeed in a universe with multiple life forms in different places, maybe very rare, but other places. And that if that's the case, at some point in our future, assuming humankind has a future, mm. that we will discover that. Um, and the other is that we really are alone. What are the impl Let's talk about the implications of, of each. I'd be fascinated to, to, to think about that. And so let's start with the implications that we're not alone. <laughs> well, one very interesting I would love to live in that sort of cosmos where there are all these different intelligent beings out there and to learn about them and so on, the good of variety, and also the good of 
lots and lots of people, not all of them humans, having interesting lives. I think it's tremendously important to have not just a, a few billion people having interesting, happy lives. I want trillions, quadrillions, quintillions of people having interesting, happy lives. I don't think that you can run the argument, well, the Romans enjoyed falling in love, and therefore my experience in falling in love must have been worth less. <laughs> <laughs> so, the more happy lives out there, the better, and I'm persuaded that science is making life better and better for people as long as we don't quickly annihilate ourselves, which is quite possible, but as long as we don't, the human race will look forward to a glorious future. I hope it will spread through its entire galaxy. But to follow what you're saying, if life is indeed as rare as you're saying, and there is this importance of expansion of the happiness quotient mm -hmm. of the universe, the totality of mm -hmm. happiness, uh, do those contradict, especially if you don't want to assume that humans are the first in class because that would put us in a very unique position, which I don't think you like to do. So you add the fact that, that life is rare in the universe. The universe should maximize the mm -hmm. happiness quotient. And it would be unlikely that humans are among or the first in this chain. Mm -hmm. It would seem like there's a contradiction. Those three things don't work together. Well, I, 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 I... I'm not sure I see the contradiction. I, I, I'm saying the universe ought to be full of life, but that's quite compatible with saying it isn't. <laughs> and I'm also saying it's going to be full of life if I can have anything to do with it. Yeah, but that, <laughs> that would be contradictory to the saying that humans are among the first or the first of our species, of, of intelligent life in the universe is going to do all that. Uh, no, sorry. Um, they're the first in a region which may be so large that right out as far as we can see, which is 10 billion light years, right. there are no other intelligent species yet. But nonetheless, beyond that region, the universe, the, the, the amount which we can see is on modern typical theories, a completely negligible fraction of the whole. So there will be beyond that, all sorts of other intelligent beings. But we may just be the, the lucky <laughs> the ones in this area, this local area, and we will then the, colonize the entire area. Doesn't that assumption about these other beings in these areas we can't see mm -hmm. a little bit, in your term, like Father Christmas, uh, wishing for something in order to satisfy your own philosophical thinking, imagining this other existence which you have no idea of whatsoever? I don't think so. I think if you take into account uh, the size of the universe, it would be rather fantastic if we were the only place in the entire universe in which living beings had evolved. Uh, if No, I'll, I'd probably have to withdraw that. I, I'd probably have to say we simply don't know. We simply don't know uh, how easy it is to make the step from complicated chemistry to life of an intelligent sort. And even the step from complicated chemistry to anything which we're willing to call a, a primitive living cell. We just don't know that. It could be that in the entire cosmos, no matter how many light years it spreads, we're the only place. We have no very good evidence one way or the other. Um, I just hope <laughs> that what, what we're, not, it, what there, we, what uh, we're it, not alone. What would it mean? Why do you hope we're not alone? Oh, because of my principle, the more happy people, the better. <laughs> and suppose we are. What happens to your principle? The more happy people, the better, but alas, the better hasn't come, <laughs> hasn't come <laughs> into being. But w would that reflect on the nature of reality about what, uh, if it turns out that we are the only one, I don't think necessarily, because, again, suppose that God had created this entire universe. 
with the aim of producing happy beings, and let's suppose also that God wanted an infinite number of happy beings, his solution is quite plain. He just has to create an infinite number <laughs> of universes. Where's your problem? 